Your engine is cooled by water being picked up through louvers in the lower unit, then pumped up into the power head and expelled through the exhaust system. That means that the engine must be tilted down into the water for it to work. Unless flushing the engine and then, with great caution, never, never attempt to start the engine unless it is tilted down into the water. Doing so can be dangerous if anyone is close to the propeller and can cause damage to vital cooling parts. Tilt the motor fully down, then you're ready to begin the starting procedure. There should be no trace of leaks or scent of gas. Sniff the bilge to make sure. Gasoline is highly flammable and explosive in a confined area. All outboards will have a primer bulb connected to the fuel line. Squeeze the bulb until it becomes firm which means the fuel has reached the fuel pump on the engine and will make starting easier and faster. If you're using a portable fuel tank, be sure the vent on the top of the cap is open. If it's a built-in tank, it's always vented. You might want to check the vent to make sure it's not become home to some small critters. Set the lanyard stop switch to the run position and attach the other end to a belt loop or life jacket. If this switch is not in the proper position, the engine will not start. This is a safety feature designed to immediately stop the engine if you leave your seat for any reason. That's assuming you actually hook the darn thing to your person. This is an important, possible, life-saving device. Do not start the motor without using it. Have I got your attention? Good. Now you're ready for the starting procedure. Place the shifter in the neutral position. That will be in the middle of the shifter range, and you'll feel a detent when you shift to it. You'll have an in-gear release button. Push this button and advance the throttle. You'll stay in neutral, but the engine will be getting more gas for the start. When you come back to neutral, the lockout releases and you can shift normally. This procedure may be slightly different if your boat is equipped with a SmartCraft Digital Throttle and Shift System, or DTS. DTS is standard equipment on Mercury Verados and optional on some Mercury Optimax engines. If it's cold, or this is the first start of the day, additional choking may be necessary. To add choke, push the key in as you turn it. Now if the engine doesn't start within about 10 seconds, stop cranking. Recheck the fuel line, pump the bulb again, and double check the safety stop switch. Wait about 30 seconds, then try again. Prolonged cranking can overheat and damage your starter, so don't overdo it. If nothing happens when you turn the key, you probably don't have the shifter in the neutral detent. All marine engines have an in-gear starting lockout that prevents you from starting the motor when it's in gear. Make sure the lever is in neutral and try again. When the engine starts, release the key and immediately reduce the throttle so the RPMs indicated on the tachometer are below 2000. If you do not have a tachometer, reduce the throttle to a fast idle speed. Allow the engine to warm up for a few minutes before pulling back to idle speed. Check to be sure you have water pressure for the engine cooling. On outboards, there should be a visual indicator in the form of a stream of water coming out of the back of the engine. If there's no stream, first check to see if the hole is clogged. A paper clip or small wire is a good tool for clearing a blockage. If there is no indication of water pressure after about a minute or pressure is low, you may have a problem with your cooling system. Shut off the engine. Trim up the engine and check the water intakes. Make sure the intakes are free of weeds, mud, or debris. This is the most common cause for malfunction. This can occur anytime you're out on the water. If you get a warning buzzer, high heat indication, or low water pressure at any time, stop the motor, trim up, and check the intakes. Carelessly discarded plastic bags can be a real menace. Besides being an environmental hazard, they can wrap around a lower unit and cut off water flow instantly. So keep a good eye out for these. Be sure you're not one of the careless ones. Stow all plastic items where they cannot blow out. All right, Skipper, good job. As the pilots say, now make sure everything's in the green, meaning check your gauges for the proper operating range. The amp meter or voltmeter should show a positive charge. Water temperature gauge, if you have one, should be in the suggested operating range. And check the fuel gauge. We took care of this on the way to the ramp, but it never hurts to double check. Make sure you have plenty of fuel for the activities that you have planned.